So welcome to the second part of hazardous materials, worker, emergency response, personnel, and levels of personal protective equipment. We've already went over the different levels of engagement with hazardous materials, whether it's somebody who is working 24-7 uh, at a treatment storage and disposal site, or you're responsible for some type of hazardous materials cleanup at a waste site, but more commonly, this first level, where you have emergency responders inside of your facility and you expect them to have a certain level of training. So we're going to move past the first responder just awareness level, because at that level you don't wear any personal protective equipment. And we're going to start to take a look at the different levels, A, B, C, and D. And you really can talk this whole thing through the slide, because what differentiates um, A from B? Besides the completely encapsulating suit, which means either we do not know what the agent is, we can't measure its concentration, or it can hurt us through absorption, the difference is just the suit itself. Both of A and B are in supplied air. Now what's the difference between B and C? Between B and C, we're both being, our air is being treated. But if you can drop down to level C, it means you absolutely know what the contaminant is, you're able to measure its concentration, and find a cartridge respirator suitable for the hazardous materials incident experience. And now let's look at C and D. Well, here with D, we have absolutely no respiratory protection. So one way to look at these different levels, A, B, C, and D, is not only the outfits that they don, but really the level of inhalation protection. So in level A, you select this when you have the greatest level of um, risk. It's either, it could be all skin, eye, respiratory, we have to protect everything. So they're in a positive pressure face mask that's self-contained. That means that the air is constantly being blown into the mask or into the suit and that creates a push. So we're pushing the chemicals out as we're pushing the clean air in. You're in a totally encapsulating suit. Um, you zip that up. It's almost like being in a double Ziploc bag. And then you have inner and outer boots. Now there's more to it, this level A protection. That's this person right here. There's more to it than that, but this is more of an overview. So it's the highest level of protection. Here's where it's really important. We're, we have high concentrations of atmospheric vapors, gases, or particulate matter. And there is a difference between a vapor, a gas, and particulate matter that you should probably know. And we'll cover that a little bit later. Um, if the site function means that you're exposed to unexpected vapors or splash. Now this type of suit, again, level A, will not protect you from fire. Um, usually level A is used when you don't know the concentration or you're just not sure of the substance. It's also used if you can be um, exposed through absorption, meaning it absorbs right through your skin. So here, Here's a very important line to keep in mind when we're thinking about level A. Most likely we have not determined what the agent is. So if we haven't determined what the agent is, you can see we're in level A here in the yellow. The self-contained breathing apparatus is on the person's back. They're wearing the mask and they're zipped into their suit and they have over boots on as well as um, a number of pair of gloves. Now here on the other side, this would be, let's say you were dealing with uh, coronavirus and you didn't want to be exposed. Um, then potentially, although for coronavirus you wouldn't do it, but you may do it for something like monkeypox, you're in a totally encapsulating suit. You could see that again, it's positive pressure. The air is being pushed into the suit. These are nice because you're not in an emergency response situation. So you can hook up the air right into um, the facility itself. And these keep you nice and cool. And you can see that you blow up like a balloon, and that's okay. You just put um, a belt on, and you're ready to go. Um, so the question would be, how long do you think somebody can stay in a suit this long before they start to feel really tired? Or us as professionals know it's time to uh, turn them over, meaning bring in a new crew.
Before donning a level A or B encapsulated suit, all wearers must have received appropriate pre-entry physical exams, such as pulse rate, blood pressure, and temperature, before donning the suit. Be sure to inspect the suit for any damage, such as scrapes, tears, discoloration, or other inconsistencies. If the suit is new, remove the duct tape from inside the suit. Apply anti-fogging wipe to visor. Begin by inserting feet without shoes or boots into suit. It's best to have a helper assist when you don the suit. Sitting on a no-back stool or bench is recommended. Put on appropriate chemical protective boots. Leave slack in toes of sock for wearing comfort. Put on outer boot covers if required. Pull garments boot flaps down over boots. Stand up and wiggle toes. Take a few steps, then sit back down. Pull suit up to your waist and secure interior suit belt if provided. Put on your SCBA pack only. Do not connect or turn on breathing air supply yet. Ensure that SCBA tank airflow is turned on and gauges are in agreement per the manufacturer's instructions. Put on respirator face piece, ensuring a solid fit. Again, do not connect or turn on breathing supply yet. Put on inner gloves if required. Stand up and reach both arms up, then pull upper part of suit over your head. Reach arm into suit down to the gloves. If the rest of your team is ready to go, attach breathing air supply and begin breathing through your SCBA. Close the suit by closing the zipper and secure all storm flaps. Check for range of motion and your mobility inside the suit. Proceed when your team is ready for entry. So level A and level B are similar in that they have the same level of respiratory protection. They're both using supplied air. The difference is in the suit. Instead of having a encapsulating suit with the zipper on it in which nothing can penetrate, you would be in a hooded chemical suit, overalls, a two-piece chemical suit. You might even be in one that has a hood over it, so it appears to be like a level A suit, but it is, in fact, a level B suit. So level A and level B, the similarities are the level of respiratory protection. The differences are um, you have maybe characterized the work zone, and you recognize that the agent there cannot be absorbed through the skin, and that the proper level of chemical suit can be used so that it doesn't um, melt the suit in any way, shape, or form. Remember, none of these are um, fire resistant. So level B protection is the minimum level recommended when you can define through sampling and analysis what is actually in there. And though even though you've defined it, you still have to be protected because of the levels or at any level you need respiratory protection. And how do you know where to find that? Well, we find that in our NIOSH pocket guide. So here's where it's important to understand the different occupational exposure limits. And as a safety and health professional, it should be secondhand the difference between an OEL, which is a general occupational safety li limit, and REL, which is NIOSH's recommended exposure limit, a time-weighted average, which is something you measure how much somebody is exposed to within an eight period time, a TLV, a threshold limit value from ACGIH, or a PL, which is a permissible exposure limit. So you'll be in um, a positive pressure respirator if the atmosphere contains less than 19.5% um, oxygen by volume, 
or you've identified vapors, gases, or particulate matter through direct reading instruments, even if it's um, something that's a, a gross measuring um, instrument, such as a Draeger tube, as opposed to a PID meter, that the levels are such that it will not enter the skin through absorption. Okay, so let's look at this practically. Here's level B, and then we have level C. So the main difference here is the respiratory protection. So in level C respiratory protection, the concentrations and types of airborne substances is known, and the criteria has been met to wear an air purifying respirator. An air purifying respirator would be a cartridge respirator, so that it is um, you have to inhale to bring the air in. It isn't positive pressure. And when you inhale, you're inhaling through the cartridges, and it is um, filtering out the contaminants. You also could be in a hooded chemical resistant clothing, um, whether it's disposable or not, and chemical resistant gloves and boots, depending on the type of um, agent that's in the environment. And again, where we find all this is in our NIOSH pocket guide. So now as we're coming through and we take another look, you could see that level A and B have the same respiratory protection, but we've dropped down in the suit. And level B and C can have the same suit protection, but we're able to drop down in the respiratory. And finally, we're on level D, and level D is, as you would see, um, Lots of different people out there, um, construction workers are in level D. Um, this gentleman's in level D, is wearing something to protect him from um, dust. And um, this may be considered level D if you did not have to um, have a fit test to be able to wear the respirator. So level D is primarily a work uniform um, that's used to protect against nu nuisance contaminants, dust and dirt. It's definitely based on the situation, and you can have um, lots of other additional PPE than just a hard hat, safety gloves. But you can see that this offers no respiratory protection. And it also offers really minimum protection against skin contaminants as well. Here, we're protecting against um, dust and dirt. So we try to downgrade as much as possible. We want to go from A to B, B to B. C, C to D, because it's just easier on our workers and it means that we're reducing the risk as well. And so some ways we do that is we figure out what's in the um, environment and we make sure that their um, all dermal hazards have been addressed. Um, and then we check the likeliness of the occurrence of that gas or vapor emissions and measure to be sure that it's below our um, Whatever standard, whatever occupational exposure limit we are following, um, we have to follow by law in the United States, of course, OSHA's permissible exposure limits. And then I think that this really is a nice um, table that gets you um, <clears throat> geared into how you downgrade and also when you have new information or a worker is requesting that you can show them the different levels of personal protective equipment and then figure out what works best for them and the environment. And um, this is an example of a way that you would choose which types of gloves are appropriate for the task, meaning that, for example, when you're working with hydrocarbons, it's uh, best to be in a neoprene glove. You can see the good rating here. Um, if you're working in organic acids, it's um, good or excellent to be in polyvinyl chloride. And we'll go through another exercise when we cover personal protective equipment in slightly more details. So this is part two to um, hazardous waste workers and emergency response personnel. And it is an overview of the different levels of personal protective equipment and this is found in 29 CFR 1910.120.